All right, welcome back. We are reading The Handmaid's Tale. Um, we are going to be starting on chapter two. And, you know, I think we're just going to jump right into it. All right, this is part two called Shopping, The Handmaid's Tale, and this is chapter two. A chair, a table, a lamp, above on the, on the white ceiling, a, rel a relief ornament in the shape of a, a reef, wow. And in the center of it, a blank space plastered over it. Like the place in a face where the eye has been taken out. There must have been a chandelier once. They've removed anything you could tie a rope to. A window, two curtains, two white curtains. Under the window, a window seat with a little cushion. When the window is partly open, it only opens partly, the air can come in and make the curtains move. I could sit in the chair or on the window seat hands folded, and watch this. Sunlight comes in through the window, too, and it falls on the floor, which is made of wood, in narrow strips, highly polished. I can smell the polish. <sighs> Excuse me. There's a rug on the floor, oval, of braided rags. This is the kind of touch they like, full cart archaic, made by women in their spare time, from things that have no further use, a return to traditional values, waste not, want nothing, I'm not being wasted, why do I want? On the wall above the chair, a picture, framed but with no glass, a print of flowers, blue irises, watercolor, flowers are still allowed, does each of us have the same print? The same chair, the same white curtains. I wonder, government issue? Think of it as being in the army, said Aunt Lydia. A bed, a single mattress, medium hard, covered with a flocked white spread. <coughs> Nothing takes place in the bed but sleep or no sleep. I try not to think too much. Like other things now, thought must be rationed. There's a lot that doesn't bear thinking about. Thinking can hurt your chances, and I intend to last. I know why there is no glass in front of the watercolor picture of blue irises, and why the window only opens partly, and why the glass is in it, and why the glass in it is shatterproof. It isn't running away they're afraid of. We wouldn't get far. It's those other escapes, the ones you can open in yourself, given a cutting edge. So, apart from these details, this could be a college guest room for the less distinguished vis visitors, or a room in a rooming house of former times for ladies in reduced circumstances. That is what we are now. The circumstances have been reduced. For those of us who still have circumstances, but a chair, sunlight, flowers, these are not to be dismissed. I'm alive. I live. I breathe. I put my hand out, unfolded, into the sunlight. Where I am is not a prison, but a privilege, as Aunt Lydia said, who was in love with either or. <clears throat> the bell that measures... Time is ringing. Time here is measured by bells, as once in nunneries. As in a nunnery, too, there are a few mirrors. I get up out of my chair. Oh, not my chair. I get up out of the chair, advance my feet into the sunlight, in their red shoes, flat heeled to save the spine and not for dancing. The red gloves are lying on the bed. I pick them up. Pull them onto the, onto my hands, finger by finger. 
Everything except the wings around my face is red, the color of blood, which defines us. The skirt is ankle length, full, gathered to a flat yoke that extends over the breast and sleeves that are full. The white wings, too, are prescribed issued. Are prescribed issue. They are to keep us from seeing, but also from being seen. I never looked good in red. It's not my color. I picked up a shopping basket, put it over my arm. <clears throat> the door of the room, not my room, I refuse to say my, is not locked. In fact, it doesn't even shut properly. I go out into the po- the polished hallway, which is which has a runner down the center, dusty pink, like a path through the forest, like a carpet for royalty. It shows me the way. The carpet bends and goes down the front staircase, and I go with it. One hand on the banister, once a tree, turned into another, turn in another century. Rubbed to a warm gloss. Late Victorian, the house is. A family house built for a large, rich family. There's a grandfather clock in the hallway, which doles out time. And then the door to the motherly front sitting room, with its flesh tones of intense. A sitting room in which I never sit, but stand or kneel only. At the end of the hallway, above the front door, is a fanlight of colored glass, flowers, red and blue. Excuse me. There remains a mirror on the wall. On okay. There remains a mirror on the hall wall. If I turn my head so that the wing, the white wings framing my face direct my vision towards it. I can see it as I go down the stairs, round, convex, a pure glass, like the eye of a fish, and myself in it, like a distorted shadow, a parody of something, some fairy tale figure in a dark cloak, descending towards a moment of carelessness that is the same as danger, a sister dipped in blood. At the bottom of the stairs, there's a hat and an umbrella stand. The bent wood kind, long rounded rungs of wood carving gently up into hooks shaped like an opening fronds of a fern. There are several umbrellas in it, black for the commander, blue for the commander's wife, and the one assigned to me, which is red. I leave the red umbrella where it is because I know from the window that today is sunny. I wonder whether or not the commander's wife is in the sitting room. She doesn't always sit. Sometimes I can hear her pacing back and forth, a heavy step, then a light one, and the soft tap of her cane on the dusty dusty rose carpet. I walk along the hallway past the sitting room door and the door that leads into the dining room and open the door at the end of the hall and go through into the kitchen. Here the smell is no longer of furniture polish. Rita is in here, standing at the kitchen table, which has the top of chipped and white enamel. She's in her usual Martha's dress, which is a dull green, like a surgeon's gown from the time before. The dress is is much like mine in shape, long and concealing, but with a bib apron over it and without the white wings and the veil. She puts on the veil to go outside, but nobody much cares who sees the face of a Martha. Her sleeves are rolled to the elbow, showing her brown arms. She's making bread, throwing the loaves for the final brief kneading, and then the shaping. Rita sees me and nods, whether in a greeting or in a simple acknowledgement of my presence is hard to say and wipes her flowery hands on her apron and rummages in the kitchen drawer for the token book. Frowning, she tears out three tokens and hands them to me. Her face might... (coughs) Excuse me. (coughs) Her face might be kindly if she would smile, 
but the frown isn't personal. It's the red dress she disapproves of and what it stands for. She thinks I may be catching like a disease or any form of bad luck. Sometimes I listen outside of closed doors, a thing I would never would have done in a time before. I don't listen long because I don't want to be caught doing it. Once, though, I heard Rita say to Cora that she wouldn't debase herself like that. Nobody's asking you, Cora said. Anyways, what could you do, supposing? Go to the colonies, Rita said. They have the choice. With the unknown woman and starve to death and Lord knows what all, what all said Cora. Catch you. They were shelling peas. Even though the the almost closed door, I could hear the light tink of hard peas falling into the metal bowl. I heard Rita a grunt or a sigh of protest or agreement. Anyways, they're doing it for us all, said Cora. Or so they say. If I hadn't got my tubes tied, it could have been me. Say I was ten years younger. It's not that bad. It's not what you'd call hard work. Better her than me, Rita said, and I opened the door. Their faces were the way women's faces are. When they've been talking about you behind your back and they think you've heard, embarrassed, but also a little defiant, as if it was their right. That day, Cora was more pleasant to me than usual, Rita more surely. Today, despite Cora's closed face and pressed lips, I would like to stay in here. In the kitchen, Cora might come in from somewhere else in the house, carrying her bottle of lemon oil and her duster, and Rita would make coffee. In the houses of the commanders, there is still real coffee. And we would sit at Rita's kitchen table, which is not Rita's any more than my table is mine, And we would talk about aches and pains, illnesses, our feet, our backs, all the different kinds of mischief that our bodies, like unruly children, can get into. We would nod our heads as punctuation to each other's voices, signaling that yes, we know all about it. We would exchange remedies to try and outdo each other to the recital of our physical miseries. Gently... We would complain, our voices soft and minor key and mournful as do- as pigeons in the eaves troughs. troughs. I know what you mean, we'd say, or a quaint expression you sometimes hear still from old people. I hear where you're coming from, as if the voice itself were a traveler arriving from a distant place which it would be, which it is. How I used to despise such talk, talk, now I long for it. At least it was talk, an exchange of sorts. Or we would gossip. The Marthas know things, they talk amongst, among themselves, passing the unofficial news from house to house. Like me, they listen at doors, no doubt, and see things even with their eyes averted they've heard them at i've heard them at it sometimes caught whiffs of their private conversations stillborn it was or stabbed her with a needle a knitting needle right in the belly jealousy it must have been eating up her okay i'm gonna start over Stillborn it was, or stabbed her with a knitting needle, right in the belly. Jealousy it must have been, eating her up. Or, tantalizingly, it was toilet cleaner she used. Worked like a charm, though. You'd think he'd have tasted it. Must have been that drunk. But they found her out, all right. Or, I would help Rita make the bread, sinking my hands into the soft, resistant warmth which is so much like flesh. I hunger to touch something. 
other than cloth or wood, I hunger to commit the act of touch. But even if I were to ask, even if I were to violate decorum to to that extent, Rita would not allow it. <clears throat> she would be too afraid. The Marthas are not supposed to fraternize with us. Fraternize means to behave like a brother, Luke would tell me. Luke told me that. <clears throat> he said... Okay, wait. Fraternize means to behave like a brother. Luke told me that. He said that there were... There was no corresponding word that meant to behave like a sister. So arrives. It would have to be, he said, from the Latin. He liked knowing about such details. The derivations of words... Curious usages. I used to tease him about being a bit a pandend. A, I can't say this word. It's a very difficult word. So excuse me. Pedantic, right? I hope that's right. I used to tease him about being a pandantic. A pandantic. I give up. I'm moving on. I take the tokens. <laughs> From Rita's outstretched hand. Oh, excuse me. That was weird. Okay. I take the tokens from Rita's outstretched hand. They have pictures on them, of the things that, of the things they could be exchanged for: twelve eggs, a piece of cheese, a brown thing that's supposed to be a steak. I place them in the zipper pocket of my sleeve, where I keep my pass. Tell them fresh. For the eggs, she says. Not like last time. And a chicken, tell them not a hen. Tell them who it's for, and then they won't mess around. All right, I say. I don't smile. Why tempt her to friendship? That's the end of chapter two. Okay, thank you for joining us if you were just here for the audiobook portion. But now we're moving into the book club portion. Okay, so we are going to chit-chat about chapter two, I guess. Um, we're learning about who lives in this house with our main character, like Cora and Rita. The Marthas, kind of learning the Martha's roles. Um, we also added Luke, and we don't really know who Luke is yet. Um, we learned about there's gossiping. We know that. Our main character wants to connect more, but 